What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and this is BDGE Big Dogs Gotta Eat. And we've done a lot of these videos that we're going to do today over the last month or so. We've done some just like the all fade list, five running backs you need to stop drafting, five players to let your idiot league mates draft. So if you've missed any of those, we've got a whole ass archive chilling on our channel that you can just go back to and take a look at. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Do the right thing. It's for the kids, okay? Today, we're going to talk about five more running backs that, as of right now, you do need to be fading. You need to stop drafting these five running backs in 2021 fantasy football. This is not the same video. This is all basically going to be based on what we saw in week one of preseason. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, that's fucking bullshit. Preseason doesn't matter. Preseason is so fucking important. This is uh, such a big edge when it comes to fantasy football. The biggest edge I can see in fantasy football right now has to revolve around injury optimism. We've talked about this 100 million times this summer. Do not draft injured players. Don't find injuries because they're going to find you in 2021 fantasy football. Number two is taking advantage of the information that we gather in preseason, okay? I don't give a shit about statistics. I don't care about a guy's yard per carry number. I don't care about having seven targets. I don't care about any of that. What we care about is seeing first team usage, okay? We look at situations in which a starting quarterback is on the field for 14 snaps. We want to know which wide receivers were on the field for those snaps with him. We want to know which running backs were in the timeshare while the starter was on the field. Because, because, because coaches do not just trot out their starting quarterbacks, do not just trot out their first team guys with backup players. Once the preseason hits, that is the most useful information. Which starters are starting with the starting quarterback and which wide receivers are are playing in two tight end sets, which running backs are playing on third down in passing situations. We're starting to get more into the nitty gritty and understand that information. So it gives us a much clearer picture of the roles that these players are going to have, right? We might have been really excited about a guy who was projected to be a workhorse. We get into weeks one, two, and three of preseason, and we see that on third downs, another running back is playing 85% of those snaps. Some of the guys that we're going to be talking about today. So this is so important to keep an eye on. And I'm obviously going to be here for you week in and week out to let y'all know about the updates, about the preseason usage, all this shit to help you stay on top of your shit until draft season comes. Because up to this point, we're just yelling about shit for three or four months. Guys that were projecting to be in, in the starting lineup, guys that were projecting to play a certain role. Now we're getting actual game film footage with Trevor Lawrence on the field, with Tua Tagli-Vola on the field, and we know who's going to be playing, and we know which running backs are going to be in on pass. Okay, I'm done I'm done yelling for now. So, first thing to do is tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling, and let's eat. <laughs> The first and most noticeable running back dropper in the rankings and a guy that needs to be drafted nowhere near his fifth round ADP is Miles Gaskin. I've been telling y'all about Malcolm Brown that he was going to be a thorn in the side of Miles Gaskin's balloon. And it just fucking popped this weekend. What we saw was one, Malcolm Brown got the start. And I'm not concerned with who got the start, right? Like in regular seasons, we see a lot of veterans get the start and then right away the rookie or the better running back goes in. Like Latavius Murray might get the fucking start for the Saints. I don't care who got the start. The fact of the matter is Malcolm Brown got the start and outsnapped the rest of the running back group there in Miami pretty damn heavily. He was working with the starters for the first drive. Gaskin came in as a breather back for Malcolm Brown. Three of Gaskin's seven total snaps with the starters began after Malcolm Brown was out for the remainder of the game like they sat him and they're like you're done running in the preseason you're done running with the first team you're benched for the rest of the game Gaskin continued to see offensive snaps with the second team that is the more concerning thing when you look at the snaps that Tua played he played 23 snaps on Saturday broken down Malcolm Brown played 16 Gaskin 7 third down Malcolm Brown played 2 Gaskin 0 inside the 5 yard line Malcolm Brown 2 Miles Gaskin 0 this is extremely fucking alarming for Miles Gaskin 
owners. Is he going to catch some passes there? Yes. Is he going to get goal line work? I am more confident now than ever that Malcolm Brown is going to be the goal line guy here in Miami. Salvin Ahmed looked really fucking good too. I'm not even sure that Ahmed is not a better pure runner than Miles Gaskin is either. So for right now, there is still time for Gaskin to reclaim like this starter role, but it's likely going to be an even committee. And that's as much as Brian Flores came out and said after the game. He said, we're going to use three running backs. We're going to use Malcolm Brown. We're going to use Salvin Ahmed. We're going to use Miles Gaskin. You do not take a three running back committee guy in the fifth round of fantasy leagues. Gaskin can still be a PPR player, but again, this is going to be a really messy situation that you do not want part of, and we're seeing it come to fruition in the preseason. Moving over from one Miami situation to another Florida, Travis Etienne, Jacksonville Jaguars. And I, for one, I, for one, am shocked that they did exactly what they told us they were going to do. Looking at the snaps, Trevor Lawrence played 15 snaps on Saturday. Running back snaps, James Robinson, seven, Travis Etienne, five, Carlos Hyde, three, third down snaps, James Robinson, two, Travis Etienne, one, Carlos Hyde, one. All three running backs saw snaps with the starters, and this was always projected. This is what they told us they were going to do, and this is what a rational person would have assumed they were going to do. Etienne was the third back onto the field this weekend. It was Robinson, who looked full well like the starter and the clear workhorse there, then Hyde, then Etienne. When Etienne was in, they didn't try any trickery. They didn't try to get him involved in the passing game, run him any screens or anything. I would have liked to have seen that. I'm not all too concerned with like how they were using him at this time. Just the fact that they were using him in a mix with James Robinson, with Carlos Hyde. It's just clear as day the fact that this is going to be a three-way timeshare in Jacksonville. Uh, Etienne does not need to be taken anywhere near the middle or the beginning of the fifth round. It's just too steep of a price to pay for a guy that we know is in a committee already. It's one thing to say, oh, he's in a committee right now, but he's by far and away the most talented and they're gonna, like they're already showing us they're going to use a committee and James Robinson is talented as fuck. I would be shocked if Etienne outtouched James Robinson this year. I would be shocked if James Robinson didn't score more touchdowns than Travis Etienne this year, okay? Etienne needs to drop significantly in drafts right now until I'm even thinking about drafting him one player that I was drafting one player that I was drafting admittedly it was late in drafts was David Johnson of the Houston Texans and you know y'all know I've been fading David Johnson for a couple of years I told a lot of you guys not to fade him for or not to take him the last couple of years and that's worked out I was bike on him this year because he was going in the 10th 11th 12th round and I was like this dude's gonna get 200 empty ass calories but or carries that were empty calories get the goal line work get a lot of pass catching work they signed philip Lindsay. they signed mark ingram ingram didn't play in this game i don't think ingram's gonna be a factor i i don't think he's gonna do anything this year but philip Lindsay played in a fashion that was significant to david johnson's outlook this year philip Lindsay eight snaps david johnson two snaps philip Lindsay took all of the first team snaps on first and second downs last night david johnson was restricted to a third down roll now what i would say is like maybe he's just old and they don't really want to use him right now in preseason but then he took some snaps with the second team and that's a little bit concerning so it might be we might just see a straight committee of philip Lindsay as an early down runner and then david johnson on third downs and in pass catching situations like Lindsay's not a good pass catcher they're not going to open up holes so i don't want Lindsay whatsoever but this makes me pull away from grabbing more david johnson shares in my draft i thought he was going to be a back that got a ton of volume just by default but it seems like they like Lindsay. this is not a situation i'm going nuts about yet honestly I mean, he was nothing to acquire in the first place, but I'd like to see the snaps and the splits as the preseason progresses, and maybe they just don't want to use him yet. But he is in the third down roll. He is going to be a guy who catches a lot of passes because they are going to be playing from behind at all times, and they're going to need to throw the ball a lot. And David Johnson is one of the best targets in that offense. It's literally like Brandon Cooks and then David Johnson. Uh, we also have to see what happens on the goal line. I'd assume David Johnson takes those carries. So he doesn't have no value, but he definitely gets taken down a notch based on what we saw preseason first game for Houston. Two more committees that we need to start being weary of. The Buccaneers. Uh, and I talked about this in yesterday's mock draft. If Again, if you're new to the channel, yesterday we did a 12-team full 18-round mock draft. So you can go check that out if you're getting prepped for your drafts. Just subscribe to the channel. We're doing videos like that every single day. So you'll get notified when they get uploaded. 5 a.m. Eastern time every day, baby. All right, so we have Ronald Jones, we have Leonard Fournette, and then they went out and signed Gio Bernard this offseason because Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette were both very, very stinky at catching passes. Fournette did pad the stats. He did catch some passes and look good doing it. Ronald Jones looked terrible. He's not going to have a pass catching role. Brady played on six snaps on Sunday. I just keep saying Sunday because I forget when all the games were. They're all over the place. So if I say Sunday and the game was Saturday, Friday, fuck you. It was Sunday. Brady played six snaps on Sunday. Fournette had two. Ronald Jones had two. Gio had two. But significantly, Gio played 
on all of the third downs. He was targeted on both of the snaps he was in on. He caught two passes for 16 yards. This is a problem. I know it's a very small sample size, but I think they're showing what's going to happen when Tom Brady's on the field on third downs. It's not going to be Fournette. It's not going to be Ronald Jones. And to be honest, I can't fucking blame them. Gio Bernard is almost like a younger, more juiced up version of what they had with James White in New England. So Gio Bernard becomes a very interesting PPR play at the end of drafts. Fournette and Ronald Jones, I don't want to say they're straight up avoid plays because this offense is going to score upwards of 30 plus points per game. They're going to have a ton of scoring opportunities. But now you're looking at a, an early down committee who we don't know is going to get the goal line carries and we do know is probably not going to get the pass catching work. So this is fucking messy in Tampa Bay. Drop Ronald Jones, drop Leonard Fournette into the 11th, 12th, 13th round area before you're ready to actually pull the trigger on those guys because we don't know what's going to happen. And most of the valuable work is now looking like it's going to go to Geo. Let's move over to one more running back group that you guys are really excited about, and that is... Well, you're not excited about the fucking group. I don't know how anybody could be, but Michael Carter. You guys are very, very excited about this fourth round rookie running back on a bad offense that's in a committee. I know he's exciting and he looked good in a UNC uniform and he's very shifty. He's like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So I get why people get hard when they watch his film. And I do think he's going to be a good NFL back, but we're not starting to creep into like the sixth, seventh, even eighth round to grab Michael Carter because even with Tevin Coleman out, Tevin Coleman was rested by the Jets on Sunday. RB snaps. Zach Wilson, the starter, played 22 snaps. Ty Johnson started, had 13 of them. Michael Carter had nine. Third down running back snaps. Ty Johnson, four. Michael Carter, one. Michael Carter is also a smaller back than Tevin Coleman and these other guys. So is he going to get any goal line work? I don't know. Not in on third downs. Not a good sign. I'm not I'm not rushing to worst case scenario for Michael Carter because, again, he is an exciting back. He definitely has some upside. But my concern is these guys are going to at least form a committee for the first half of the year, right? Michael Carter can definitely – most coaches don't want to come out and just outright give a full workload to – a rookie running back. I understand that. That usually is not the case. It's 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 what we saw with Swift last year, with Dobbins, with would have been Taylor if he wasn't uh if Mac didn't get hurt, Cam Akers, all these guys took a while to assimilate into the offense. Michael Carter is not those guys. Those offenses are not this offense. And Tevin Coleman wasn't in and he was still the second running back in this rotation. Ty Johnson, Tevin Coleman, Michael Carter all going to get playing time for the Jets this year. And I think we're going to see that come to fruition more and more as the preseason pushes. I do think Michael Carter will overtake Ty Johnson. I think it'll be more of a battle between Ty jo or Tevin Coleman and Michael Carter. But the upside of being in the committee in this offense is just not as high as you guys think it is because Michael Carter looks good on film. That's what I will say to you, okay? That is the end of the video. It was a quick one, but I think it was informative. I, I hope it helped you guys. I'm going to be staying on top of the preseason games, on top of the snap counts, on top, on top of the usage and all that good shit. So, again, if you're new, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll be bike with this same video for wide receivers tomorrow. All right, I'm out of here. Love y'all. Peace.